Sydney Cummings Summertime Fine is a 65 workout over 90 days. This is designed to be a five week training program to help you to build your strength as well as to lose fat all while gaining muscle and being a more fit and healthier version of yourself. As busy women, we don't have a bunch of extra time. We have to make sure that our workouts are the most effective and efficient that they can possibly be. And so I took this 90 days so that you don't have to take this 90 days to decide if this training program is going to be right for you and to get the results that you want to see. So if you're ready, let's get started. What's up, mamas? Alexandria here, 35-year-old toddler mom, therapist, and gym rep. After losing over 40 pounds postpartum, And in a natural way, it became part of my mission to find sustainable workouts that actually give results. We need workouts that are going to be effective and efficient in the shortest amount of time possible. And so it's become my mission to explore lots of different training programs. Today, we're going to explore Sydney Cummings Summertime Fine series over this 90 day journey. So I'm going to walk you all the way through and go back in time. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to share both my results with you. And if you love it, I would love if you would give me a thumbs up and subscribe, of course, if you haven't done so already. And let's go back in time. Okay, that was weird. I'm sorry. Let's get started. I took some initial measurements and I weighed myself and I wanted to see what kind of progress I would make. As most of you know, I tend to work out with Caroline Gervan and I wanted to shake things up. I did do some workouts. I did a program with Sydney uh, earlier on and I did enjoy it. So I'm excited to do summertime fine this time around. So let's go for day one. Day one is dumbbell full body with two minute work duration. So this should be entertaining. Let's go. Whoo, y'all. Whew. That was fun. That was um, a different kind of style of training than I would typically do uh, or have been doing for a while. So that was a fun change of pace, shake it up. And uh, I really enjoyed it. So I found the sort of unilateral work really interesting where she was having us balance on like different legs and things like that. I found that really interesting. And that's probably really good for me because that's something I could really benefit from is being more intentional in bracing my core. So I thought that was really interesting, really fun. So day one of Summertime Fine is in the books. Check. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for day two. Bye. Man, y'all. I push today. I'm sitting inside of the. There's a bed here. Whew. I push today, y'all. I think I might have gone a little too heavy, but it's fine. Better more than less, right? Hello, my friends. It's time for summertime fine. Day five. I'm excited. So, tier one, first week is in the bucket, in the bag, in the whatever. So, um, I'm happy to report no gains have been lost at this point. We're literally a weekend. My, like, paranoia and body dysmorphia is already kicking in. <laughs> All right, friends, so let's get started. Oh, I forgot to mention, today is cardio and abs. So no weights today, sadly, but it's good for me. Well, it took a week, but I finally figured out what my appropriate weights were. So that's a good sign. Summertime fine day six is done. Again, I just, it took me a week to get my bearings. So, but I think I'm feeling good. I keep having to remind myself that change is good. Change is hard for me by nature, so I'm trying to remind myself that change is good. My default setting is, you know, with Caroline, and so even though these are great workouts, my sort of, like, innate notion is to be concerned because I'm not doing things exactly the way I would normally do them, and that's hard for me. So, But summertime fine day six is in the books. It was a good workout. I enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, my friends. I come to you post tier two of Summertime Fine. I wanted to quickly check in because last week was the end of tier one and we are at tier two. So I quickly wanted to check in with you guys just sort of of my experience with tier one. So tier one was very much more unilateral and a little bit faster paced of things using a lighter weight. Whereas I can already tell with tier two, we are shifting into heavier weights and like more intense strength training. And to be honest with you, after finishing the first day of tier two, which is day 21, I really surprised myself with how much weight I could lift. I was really scared, honestly. I was really suspicious that I wouldn't be able to lift as heavy after 
that kind of training for like four to five weeks, but I was really surprised and impressed with how much I could lift today. And I even set some new PRs. So, okay, fine. I'll admit, I'll accept, maybe this is a good option for training. <laughs> I'm not really suspicious. I've done Sydney's workouts before, but I'm just always a little skeptical of things that I don't already know. It's who I am as a person. So, uh, day 21 is done and uh, onward we press to tier two. And then you'll see some clips probably here and there of me working out in tier two. And I'll check in again when something magical happens or you need to know something new. finished day 30 of summertime fine and I was having a thought I was thinking about a comment that I got on the video that I posted today and they were talking about basically how like seeing thumbnails of like Caroline Gervan and all these like super fit people were intimidating and while I certainly think that's valid that it can be intimidating to see somebody that's like super fit doing workouts I want to challenge you to think a little bit differently and I want to challenge you that if you feel like you are working out with someone that's at the same fitness level as you, then you're doing it wrong. It's just like being the smartest person in the room. You don't want to be the smartest person in the room because if you're the smartest person in the room, you're not learning anything. If you are the most fit person in the room, you're not learning anything. You're not getting stronger. You're not building. You're not pushing because you need something to propel to. So I encourage today, go do hard things. Go try something new. And let me know if you need me. I'm right here. Hello, lovelies. I wanted to check in with you guys. So I've officially finished tier two of Summertime Fine. I did that yesterday. Today is very clearly a rest day. Uh, but I figured I would just jump on and talk to you guys anyway in this particular fashion. It just felt easier. So... I wanted to chat with you guys about tier two and kind of my thoughts so far. So in tier one, we did lighter weights, higher reps in order to prioritize the core strength and endurance pieces of exercising. And tier two was very much strength focused and about pushing your weights. And I think I really enjoyed the second tier of strength training because as you probably figured out by now, I like strength training a lot. I think the key difference for me, as I notice, you know, from training with Caroline versus training with Sydney is in Sydney's case, she kind of starts you at an expected weight, but then encourages you to like push up and like keep moving as you're working through the treat strength training segments. And so what that means for you as the consumer or the, the person doing the workout is that if you are pushing up, like Sydney suggests, it can sometimes take a little bit longer to complete a workout because if you're like me and you have dumbbells that you know, you have to trade out the weights on, that can be a little more time consuming. And so that's just something to consider. Like for example, a 30 minute workout might take you closer to 40 or 45 minutes if you're like upping your weights each round or, you know, a 45 minute workout might take you closer to an hour. Whereas I notice when I do strength training with Caroline, based on the weights that she sets, she just uses the same weight for the most part throughout with sort of expectation that you're gonna hit that fatigue state anyway without necessarily needing to push up. So just something to consider, just something that I noticed. Overall though, I've really enjoyed the strength training portion with Sydney and I think that, especially if you're somebody new to strength training, you might really like the way that Sydney functions, especially in her like strength training programs because she sort of explains to you as you're going through, like how do you know if you're pushing hard enough? How do you know if you're getting close enough to failure? And I think for somebody who's learning or who has a hard time sort of mentally pushing themselves past that barrier, that can be a really great resource for you. So tomorrow starts tier three and I'll be interested to see what that holds. And then here in about four-ish weeks, it'll be time to share my results and final thoughts. So that is all for now and I will talk to you soon. Bye friends.
Well, hello, my friends, and happy Tuesday. It's day 52 of Summertime Fine. I've now forgotten. Forgive me. Um, but it's day 52 of Summertime Fine, and I just finished my workout. I was outside working out, but it's very, very hot. So, like, it's already, I mean, this, the workout was not this level of challenging. It's just that it's, like, hyper humid outside. But I just want to check in and say hello uh, and just, you know, let you know how it was going. I will say, you know, one of the key things that I do over vacation is I try to go ahead and get my workout in first thing in the morning like I normally do at home just because we get super busy and we're having a great time, which is wonderful. But it also means that in order to make sure that I get that fitness time in, it sometimes means I have to go ahead and, and you know, pump it out there in the morning. So that's become a really crucial part of vacations for me. It's just much harder to work in if I have to figure it out later in the day. So I go ahead and try to knock it out, whether it's at the gym or whether it's here at our like space. And we happen to be in a house this particular trip. But anyway, I wanted to check in though, because I am noticing some improvement in my core. And so I wanted to make note of that because I think it's really important. As I've mentioned in previous clips, I really hate abs and I really hate core work. And partly because I'm weak and I don't, I don't like it. So I think if you're like me and you're a person who is typically sort of not a huge fan of abs, you will notice improvement in this because she really does push you to work your core and like actually do it properly. So, all right, my friends, we're getting close to the end. We've got just a few more weeks left of summertime fine. Then we'll wrap it up, talk conclusions, and then on to the next one. Bye friends. What's up guys? I come to you with a bit of an update on my journey so far. So, to, let's see. so I came home from vacation and proceeded to get sick. So I took basically most of the week off. I missed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday's workout. And then Thursday is typically a rest day and I took a rest day. Today is Friday. But what I've opted to do is basically just make up the week and try to do it in hyper speed. So today I did, oh shoot, 56 and 57. I'll have to check back, check myself, but 56 and 57. And then tomorrow I'm going to try to get in 58. And then I'll sort of have to play it by ear as to how I'm going to make up my work up, workout days it may push me a little bit behind schedule of finishing Summertime Fine on time, but this video is not going to go out like the second Summertime Fine is over anyway, so. But I just wanted to give you guys an update on how things are going, kind of where we are. Um, and yeah, feels good to be better, feels good to be back at it. It's interesting as someone who works out consistently, the how much better I feel and how much more I'm able to push, like, right off of, like, an, a deload, whether it's anticipated or unanticipated, you know, because sometimes we do it on purpose. Sometimes we do it on accident. This just so happens to be an accident. I think this is the second time I've been sick during summertime fine, I, I believe. So, hashtag life with toddlers. Okay, I have talked enough. I have rambled. And I will talk to you guys later. I'm very sweaty, but felt good. It was worth it. Bye. We did it. We made it, guys. I'll be honest, I don't really get emotional anymore after finishing programs because it's just who I am as a person now, which is really cool. But if you are just starting on this journey or this was your first program that you've completed, if you're completing along with me or after that, whatever, congratulations. That's a huge commitment. You just spent 90 days dedicating to yourself and to being a healthier version of you for you and for your family. And I am so proud of you. So tomorrow-ish, probably, most likely, I'm going to go take my measurements and check back in. And we'll do a final check-in of everything that was accomplished over 2024's Summertime Fine. There we go. Words. And uh, yeah, and then we'll call it a wrap on this one. It'll be time to do something else. So, all right, friends. I'll see you soon. After completing the 90 days of the Summertime Fine program, I have a lot of thoughts. And of course, I want to share my results with you. Over the series, I opted to pick up the three tiers calendars for the summertime fine program so tier one is more endurance focused and building up your like cardiovascular endurance and tier two is more of your strength focus and then tier three is kind of a nice combination of the two you can pick up the workouts for the workout calendars on her website and they're a great sort of add-along you don't necessarily need the calendars unless you a want to give her your money because, you know, she's working hard to create these programs, which is really honestly partly why I did it. The other part of why I did it is because I'm a control freak and I like to know what workouts are coming and what to prepare for, even if I can't see them or add them. It's who I am as a person. So that's something to keep in mind whether or not you want to do that or not. So 
let's start off with the positives or the pros. And that is that Sydney is a phenomenal human being. You can just tell that she genuinely cares so much about her community and cares so deeply about helping people. And I, I had the suspicion, I've never met her in real life, but I just had the suspicion that she's a really good human being. And I really appreciate and respect that. Throughout her workouts, you're going to get positive motivation throughout the workout. And for somebody who is either newer to training or for somebody who has a trouble committing themselves to like pushing themselves harder, I think that's really terrific and really, really helpful to have. And so if you're one of those people who really struggles to feel like you're getting the most out of your workout, Sydney is a great option for you because she's really going to push you. She's going to challenge you and she's going to say, hey, I think you can go heavier. Like, let's do this. Let's be motivated together. And to be honest, it's kind of like the next best thing to having like a real life personal trainer. So I think that's terrific. And I think that's amazing. I recognize that that may not be for some people, but for those of you who struggle to like be motivated or push yourself hard enough in the workout, that's absolutely, absolutely something that Sydney is going to offer for you. And I think realistically, when I look at her programs and when I look at her workouts, there are some good and effective workouts. They ebb and flow in degree of difficulty. Some are more difficult than others. And to be honest with you, given that I hadn't really had a lot of experience training with Sydney, it took a little bit of finagling to figure out exactly kind of what weights I needed early on, just because I'm accustomed to a different trainer. And so different trainers have different training styles. And that triggered me to sort of have to play around and figure out like, what were the weights that I needed? in this particularly pro particular programming style. And as you get more accustomed to doing different routines, you can kind of have a better idea of what you need and what you're working with. And I think, so Sydney's workouts tend to vary from 30 minutes to about 50, 45-ish minutes. Typically, is sort of like the time frame that's called for. But with the type of training that she does, she encourages you to like bump your weights up. And when you do that, or if you do that, you will find that it takes more time because it's going to take you time to rotate in between weights, especially if you're like me and you have the power blocks where you have to like move stuff around. It's going to be a little more time consuming than that. So go ahead and plan that each workout is going to take you 10 to 15 minutes, at least a bit longer than is originally programmed on the calendar. So if the workout says it's 45 minutes, but if you're changing your weights in and out, you can go ahead and expect that workout to be closer to an hour. Hopefully that makes sense. And so in that way, I think that's a little bit of a con in that particular training style. But again, that's a personal preference thing, but you may prefer that. And certainly it is a form of progressive overload, which is great. And I think that's Sydney's intention is to really just push you to your limits, which I think is great. It just functions a little differently than I'm accustomed to. Additionally, I do really appreciate that Sydney offers all these different kinds of workouts. I think she's even set the world record for a number of YouTube workouts, which is insane. But I do feel like sometimes the workouts are unnecessarily complicated, like the movements are unnecessarily complicated, but I think that's more of a reflection of offering content on YouTube than it is about like her programming specifically. I think honestly, when you make YouTube content, especially fitness content on YouTube, in order to get people to watch and continue to stay tuned, you have to shake things up and change it up for them. And I think that's really what the variety that she's offering does. But the reality is, is that simple and basic, it all still works. And so I think sometimes we get in the weeds and overcomplicate things entirely unnecessarily. When If we just focused on the basics and got really good at those, we'd actually see better results than focusing and like making things unnecessarily complicated, like lunging and pressing and, you know, just doing a lot of things all at one time. I don't really know what that is, but we're doing all the things all at one time. So for whatever that is worth, just something to keep in mind. Again, this is not really a criticism. It's just sort of an observation that I made. But overall, I think these are really high quality programs. As I've mentioned, if you're a person who just needs to push harder, or maybe you are like a very beginner to working out, this is a great program option for you. And of course, they're free unless you want to purchase the calendars. So really and truly, I, I do think this is a great training option for someone. I do think it's worth your time and energy. But let's talk about my results. Okay, so here's the thing about my results. Here is my before video and here is my after and my measurements as well. I'll include those on the screen. Um, nothing changed. Um, a little anticlimactic, but um, yeah, nothing actually changed for me. I like maybe dropped like the smallest amount. You can maybe see like slightly more ab definition, but that's it. And I don't necessarily think that's a reflection of Sydney's programs or her ability to create good programs. As I've said, I think it's much more a reflection on 
just the power of Caroline's programs and the effectiveness of her programs and also just my training age more so than anything else. I think if you are, you know, an earlier or newer to workouts, you're more likely going to see better results from the summertime fine program than I did. I'm confident that there are women who started this and this was their very first program they ever completed and they saw much more results than I did. And I think that's just the reality of, you know, your training age and how long you've been training for much less than it is about the quality of the programs. That being said, I didn't like, I didn't lose anything. I just didn't make any additional strides. And so that's just something to consider with that as well. Like what is your training season? You know, what's your training age and like how much of different programs have you been doing? That might be a consideration as to how much like quote progress you're going to see. But I think if you're just looking for consistency and quality workouts, these are a great option if you like Sydney's personality and you like somebody who talks you through the programs. I did hit some new PRs uh, throughout some of the series, which I thought was pretty cool and just felt kind of good. But honestly, I think it's harder for me to know that based on the different training styles. So the other thing too, is that honestly, I could have done a much better job of like keeping on track with my fitness. My intention when I started summertime fine was that I was going to live in a deficit the entire program. And I just didn't do that. I I think I got in my head and I got so focused on the fact that I wanted to like look like the people who could help people on the internet to lose weight. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to set a good example for all of you who are watching this video that I got so caught up in like having like the right body to do that and like the training body. And I think I've just realized that I really need to practice what I preach and make sure that I too am practicing balance in the way that I encourage all of you to. And so I think I've just decided that I want tacos and margaritas more than I want a six pack. And I think for right now, that's just, that's just where I am you know, in all trueness and honesty. And, you know, I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think, you know, I preach that it's important to love our bodies and take care of them. And honestly, I just feel good. Like my body feels good right now. And so I don't feel like I need a six pack. The six pack is not going to make me feel any better or stronger or healthier. And so I'm going to just, that's a vanity thing. And I'm just going to stop like giving so much energy to that. And so I encourage you, if you're thinking like I am, like, maybe you should too. If you're feeling good, you're feeling healthy, you're taking care of your body, like maybe we we take a break, take, take a breather, right? <laughs> and so that's kind of where I am. Like I said, I could have done a better job with nutrition and maybe I would have seen some different results. So I want to make sure I note that as well um, in case any of you are kind of wondering about that. I did, I basically what I did is I kept my maintenance calories. So if you guys want to what I eat in a day to maintain my 45 pound weight loss, let me know. I'm happy to make that video for you guys. But Please stay tuned because I am going to do a comparison video between Caroline and Sydney because I think there are some distinct differences between the two training styles and different people are right for different programs. So that video is coming. That should be the next video after this one. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that one. And it'll be linked somewhere on the screen <laughs> when it is available. And again, I thank you so much for watching. If you loved it, I'd love if you give this video a thumbs up. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you next time. Bye, friends.